Hi, and welcome to Harden Life Live. We are the Hardens, and we are a family and a team of counselors and coaches who are committed to bringing you some tips on how to live your best life, both from a therapeutic and biblical perspective. So we are so excited to sit with you today and continue our month-long focus on the family code. And we have done everything um, really surrounding emotions. Last week we did attachment and now we're really discovering how to have that conversation with your family. And mom, you took this topic and I would love just to hear from you, even just as a therapist of how you engage your clients in this conversation and empower them to have this conversation with their family when they don't want the family code to continue, when they want their role to be different. In their family you know that really happens a lot uh, we grow up in a family and it's almost like innately as children we figure out what we need to do to sort of keep the family happy yeah keep mom stable dad not reactive and so we might be the achieving child or the helping child or the problem child even mm. and a lot of times it did actually help us yeah. in our families but the problem is you get to be an adult and all of a sudden you don't want to be the helping one to where you're burnt out. You don't want to be the problem child to where you know the only way your parents connect is agreeing over how bad you are, you know. Yeah. So I see that when people are wanting to get out of that childhood scripted role, mm -hmm. they need a practical how-to. And that mm -hmm. was my motivation in writing that blog is, how do I even begin to change this if I'm ready, Not even if the family's not? Mm -hmm. What about you, Deb? What kind of roles do you see maybe even are most common in families that we take on. I know you mentioned the helper or the problem child. What else do you kind of see? Well, certainly in my own family, you know, it was the hero role. You know, mm -hmm. I, I just felt like that there was more idealism um, and more um, unrealistic expectations that I put on myself uh, in order to keep kind of everybody happy. And mm -hmm. um, I see that a lot uh, to where uh, men, uh, especially, are given some kind of role uh, that they're um, invited to perform and certainly men in general uh, rely on uh, the feedback of competency to validate their masculinity and when we get it wrapped around performance uh, rather than um, legitimate identity and who they are uh, as an image bearer of God um, in their own performance, then it, 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 it's like their RPMs are up, but they're not moving. It's like they're stuck in the mud, but they're working really fast like a hamster on a wheel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Well, I think, you know, the thing that we have to recognize and really the first step for a lot of people, and Abigail uh, did such a great job on this in the blog she wrote a while back, oh, yeah. is first you've got to notice what your family role is. Yeah. Be clear in your own mind what I'm doing and how I got there. But I really wanted to sort of state the obvious is that when you decide you're ready to really own your full self, like you're saying, hon, getting out of the, stuck out of the mud, um, you've got to be prepared that it is going to rock the boat a little bit more and it'll probably cause more white water initially before the change happens. Mm -hmm. And I think you just gotta be prepared for that. Well, and that did happen in our own family. And I think that <laughs> it did- Speaking from experience, it, right? Speaking from experience. <laughs> and I I remember I was not the one to rock the boat. That's not my, my deal. But I remember being so shocked. It's like, this isn't working? This isn't good? What What's wrong with this way? It's, it, it's working for me. And so I think one thing to anticipate when you have the conversation is for, for your family to not get it mm -hmm. at all and to be really blindsided by it. Well, I think it goes in hand with how Jesus says that that which we create to make life work must die. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, and he's really putting his finger on these family codes. Um, uh, it's Jesus the counselor uh, right there that our false self um, must die. Mm -hmm. and, and what we do to put the false self to death is simply set boundaries. And Jesus never ru rushes in to rescue us out of a process that he intends us to go through for development. And so he gives us the freedom uh, to empower us to set the boundaries. We've got to make our yes, yes, and our no, no. Mm -hmm. That's such a cool point, hon, because honestly, family codes really start because we don't feel like we can use our yes or our no. Mm -hmm. And we sort of go covert and figure out a way to, you know, manipulate the situation because I can't go direct. I don't know how to set boundaries. And also we're just trying to keep our family stable so we feel safe. Mm -hmm. It's it's definitely very self uh, validating to us. And that's why I think Audrey, as you were saying, why no one really wants to see it because it's going to make me feel insecure that the way I've always been doing life is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. And that's scary. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think for me, the example in the blog, I even asked you when you wrote it, like, <laughs> were you writing that about me? Because my role in our family has been the helper. It's like, let me anticipate the needs of our family so that everyone is happy and if they're happy they're happy with me and then they would meet my needs and or there's a better chance of them meeting my needs and seeing me i wanted to guarantee that i would be seen and what that led to though was a life of broken boundaries broken heart and burnout big time burnout because it's not sustainable to give yourself away for the sake of another. I think Jesus is a great example of that. Again, he he did set boundaries. He did care and love, but within the bounds that he had set. And again, he always said, I am here to do the will of my father, not my own will. And, and so I love what you were saying, Dad, about really dying to not just ourselves, but to our, our self-protection so that we can live a life that is more reflective of Christ. Well, and again, you know, for most men, uh, my experience is that most men um, suffer from uh, depression or anger issues. Mm -hmm. And that depression is a um, um, uh, indicator that boundaries need to be set. The anger is an indicator that boundaries need to be set and setting them through anger or setting them uh, through depression is an illegitimate form of power, either passive power or active power. And what we need to learn to do is to own our own lives and then speak in uh, to the boundaries that need to be set. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know the uh, practical steps for you and I to actually do this are the hard steps. Mm -hmm. And I know we won't have time here, but uh, in the blog, I give a sample conversation of how to, you know, begin to change your role in the family without pointing the finger at others. So because helpful. honestly, the blame game does no good when you're trying to change your role. Taking ownership for how you've done your own protective strategy is such a humble way. And I think even in our family, as we personally have had to grapple with all of our roles, it's enabled us to go, wow, I see what I did. And then the other person is safer to go, wow, I see what I did. And mm -hmm. uh, it can really change your whole dynamic. And I think it's probably our happy point is to be able to sit here and say, we have actively worked on this. We've not let it go. And we've all grown. And mm -hmm. it's, it's a great feeling to know we're in a different place. And a better place. Yeah. I mean, when I, when I was so shocked that that and blindsided by the confrontation that our family wasn't in a good place. Uh, 
I, I didn't want it to change, but I can honestly say that it has been the best change and it has sharpened all of us. And I believe we are all more like Jesus than we have ever been. And, and, and there's still room to grow oh, more. Yeah, it's not stopped. <laughs> but, but it's so exciting when you face your stuff where, where and how God can use it and take you. So we are so excited uh, for you to get to just begin to explore for your family role uh, on your own and then to begin to have those conversations. So check out the blog, hardinlife.com, and we will see you next week.